and we're live how is everyone happy friday happy friday i'm great hey, i want to give you guys a pro tip recommendation while you're reading the uh disclaimers so got uh fourth of july coming up and I'll tell you the best place, this is a full-fledged recommendation. The best place to buy your flags is over at the American Legion. You know, you go downstairs and uh, you don't have, I mean, you might have to bring your own cigarettes, uh, but, but go downstairs and they have the best flags, the best flags money can buy. Three by five, four by six, they got them. Plus they'll take your, old beat up flag and they'll properly dispose of it and so i just want to give a shout out to all my american legions friends and thank you for uh, helping me pick up some flags uh for the flag post uh coming up so that, that's that's my uh one of my more exciting things this week doug you're a week or two behind when was flag day wasn't that last week or <laughs> yeah yeah i i'm just i'm getting ready for july 4th I, I, I'm excited for the Rockets red glare. Now, do they sell flag poles as well or just the flags? No, but if you need a flag pole recommendation, uh, hit me up individually. I, a, a friend of mine, he just bought a 30 foot, like single pole, like not one that goes up and down and uh, had to come in on a flatbed semi. So if you're looking for like a used car dealership size flag, uh, I could probably hook you up with one of those for your front lawn. All right. I need a, I need a pole and a flag. I tried to install one earlier this week, so we will get in contact. I, I've got your number. <laughs> so this, uh, this disclaimer has one more week of longevity to it. We will be shifting that securities offered through line in uh, two weeks. So next week it'll remain the same. And then beyond that, we'll have new and exciting news, I think. I think to what is back in the day uh, first investments we had this thing called cage. Do you remember the cage? Amanda? Are I you, have no idea what he just said. Okay, I, I thought <laughs> what try a to so uh something. Okay, let's try this again. <laughs> so do you guys keep you remember the cage? I, oh, am I, I not working? We do. <laughs> uh, I'll, I'll kick it off here. How about that, Amanda? What do we need to know, Amanda? Nothing. I was going to go rogue and blank on here. You you take you take, uh, take it over. What do we need to know, Keith? I'm going to go mute. All right. Well, I've got all kinds of good things you need to know. Uh, let's just start with the market. It it, we are looking for what we call a, um, a follow through day. That's when the institutions come into the market off of a bottom and they come in with big volume. And um, um, uh, we've been waiting patiently. And today it seems like it might be trying to do that. Um, let me share my screen with you here and show you the index. This is S&P 500, which is a According to the disclaimer you read, is you cannot invest in the S and P 500. You can buy an investment that looks like it, but it has incremental expenses that are not involved in this actual performance here. So It'd be really expensive to buy the S all of those stocks. You know, uh, it would be probably about twenty percent less than it was just a few weeks ago. <laughs> <laughs> On sale now. Yeah. So. Uh, yeah, so this bottoming process that we see over here today could be something, but if right up here, um, I'll put my pointer on here, it shows that the volume is down 17% at this point in the day from a normal day, but it it's acting like it's wanting to kind of get above this threshold that we had sell off here a few weeks ago. So we're watching this closely for you. These uh, these days right here, here and here, we're just so damaging to the psyche of the market and the situation that um, it, it just did some quick damage. And, and we hopefully this we're nearing the end of this, but time will tell and we will uh, deploy resources for you as we sense that the environment is getting a little more predictable and safer for you. 
Yeah, there's really been no place to hide, and especially here recently with the with oil stocks uh, dropping off a little bit, energy stocks dropping off. So cash has been good. It has been, uh, and and um, what's been ironic to me, uh, two things that have been coming up in my radar. Guess what uh, places are starting to show life, Doug? Well, I've seen a few places starting to show life. Uh, one is China. Uh, and, and the other is uh, in technology. What are you seeing? Uh, China was on my list, uh, which um, that's kind of odd. You know, you, you get a bias in your mind. But I, I started noticing it two, three weeks ago that they were start those stocks had kind of formed a bottoming kind of look, a rounding out, and starting to work their way up. And we're seeing that now. And and so I wouldn't be, I wouldn't rule out us buying something like a, a an exchange traded fund or something that gives you yeah. a small exposure to that and then uh i just noticed in the last couple of days uh, biotech stocks are starting to show some strength and um, um those both of those uh would normally seem very very aggressive and particularly why would you buy those at a bottom of the market right other than right. other yeah. buyers are doing that so that's kind of interesting to me yeah, I think it's also interesting if you look at those averages. Keith, hover your uh, cursor over the last trading day or right here, last couple of trades. Yeah. And uh, let's see how far we are from the 200 and the 50 oh, day. And the beautiful thing about the beautiful thing about averages is um, th they're going to work towards us. <laughs> I mean, that's just how the math works out. They're going to they're going to they're going to work towards us. So we're not you know, you're not missing out if you don't get that first bump off the stock market. It could even be a head fake. And so like what, what's it show us, Keith? What are, what are, where are we at? We are on the NASDAQ, which is going to be uglier. We are 18.4 uh, percent below this black line here. And what happened with this black line was probably you can see it right here. In March, it flattened out and it started to drop. And so you have a declining both 50-day moving average and 200-day, which just tells you that the market is trending downwards. And uh, we would sure like to see at least short-term this 50-day, this red line get you know, taken over by the market's activity. Otherwise, um, it's probably going to prove to be resistance or not um, a, a force that pushes the, the, the things downward. So this is just getting in line with what is the trends are pointing down. And so it's not market timing or trying to time the market. It's just really listening to what the market is telling us. And uh, for several trading sessions a year, this year, it's been telling us, hey, buyer beware. And the S&P is down about 13% below that 200 day moving average. And it really, um, it didn't really start trending downwards until May. So uh, the, yeah. the NASDAQ definitely started. I mean, the, the, the 50 day started way back here almost in January, but the, I'm talking about the longer term, almost a year long trend has uh, now pointing downward. So we'll see what Let's happens. look at the S&P 600 real quick. These are the little guys. The little guys. It's the little guys, the little guys like you. The little guys like you, Clark. <laughs> That's a Christmas vacation uh, line in case you uh, were wondering what I was talking about. Uh, the little guys, the small stocks are 15% below their 200 day moving average. And again, yeah. that one flattened out and started downwards about, looks like this one was January as well. So yeah, it there's... is, uh, um, I don't know how to, pull up crypto. Uh, let me look here. I'll quit sharing this. Only way I know is, is through a, an ETF. And I don't know that we could flash that one on the screen. Do you suppose our, uh, our future compliance officers would allow us to show an ETF? And perhaps. Yeah, yeah. perhaps. Uh, with, disclaim with disclaimers of this is not a recommendation for you because we don't know. We don't know what you're thinking. This is not for you. I don't know we that don't we've ever, have we ever recommended crypto? No, no. But you know what? It, it's becoming a market just like everything else. And that's what I really dig about it is just like it's, you know, the housing sector, the biotech sector, uh, transportation sector, gold and silver, um, 
crypto is becoming its own thing. And that's pretty cool. Cryptocurrencies. Here is the crypto 200 index by Selecti. I've never, I don't even know what that is. Other it's an than index. It's Just an like index. It. Yep. I like that. Nice. And, and you cannot buy this. I don't think <laughs> so. <laughs> we don't think. I, uh, somewhere in my well, notes. If you here, can, don't. <laughs> yeah, not I today, mean. anyway. Uh, in my notes here today, uh, it says, be careful. 46,000 Americans reported being scammed out of, an, out of an estimated $1 billion of cryptocurrency cons. Uh, that was a source of the Federal Trade Commission. And I would argue with you that probably less than a thousand of those actually got scammed. The other 45,000 were just trying to get rich quick and got what probably happens when you do that. But anyway, that's Keith's opinions. Those are not those of Gimbal Financial, <laughs> they're just mine. Thanks for that disclaimer. <laughs> anyway, uh, you could have bought all you wanted of this currency uh, according to this index. Uh, and this is just a benchmark roughly. November 1st, you would have paid um, about $1,500 for something that looked like this. And today you can get all you want for four sixty two. dollars And if my math serves me right, that's somewhere between a 75% and 80% loss in your capital. So we are not like too biased really on what it is, whether it was a crypto index, the S&P 500, the NASDAQ, a small cap. I mean, what we want to see is stuff trending in the right direction. And we want to work in trends and life works in trends. Uh, when you have positive trends going or positive weather happening, that's a that's a good thing. I went on a bike ride with a farmer friend of mine this week, and he was pointing to me the trends of corn. Uh, here in the Midwest, we've had a good season for growing corn. If you look at corn, it's nice, dark green. However, here recently with heat coming on, the corn has started to like turn. And, and the leaves are protecting the corn itself. And so, so that tells us that, that, hey, it's probably gonna be hot and the corn's trying to protect itself. And that's the way we look at stock markets and we look at places to invest money is what, how are things trending? We're really not trying to time anything or trying to get ahead of it and guess what's going on. It's just, what's, what's the market telling us? And I think uh, I, I was talking with an engineer about some of the, research we do on your behalf a couple of weeks ago. And, uh, and he asked me, he was wanting to take his engineering mindset to investing so that he wouldn't feel completely ignorant towards an investing. So I re recommended a couple of books to him and uh, he uh, started reading them and said, you know, this, all of this that you're talking about is exactly what I look at in engineering. And he talked about different oscillators, different Fibonacci numbers, all these um, these things that actually show up in nature, that these cycles are in nature. They're unbelievable cycles. Uh, one of the terms that um, I can't think of the term right now, it's, it's um, a reproducing kind of geometric shape. And I can't think of it. I'll, I'll have it for you guys next week. But there's all sorts of things that reflect the process of investing. They re reflect the process of human psychology. And fear and greed really are at the core of what happens in the market, not everything else that you might perceive. Actually, I want to share some a screen here. Um, take a look at this, uh, if I can find it. Uh, oh, goodness. Oh, sorry. You want me to keep talking while you're- Yeah, you, you, you keep talking. What, what are we showing here? Um, oh, I've got, this, I've got this header that's in my way. <laughs> uh, well, since uh, 2020, when we went into the lockdown phase, the U.S. savings rate hit a peak of, um, where's my, 33.8% the savings rate. I don't know if you remember that. You didn't have anything, no goods or services, couldn't even buy toilet paper. So there were Weren't things to buy, but the average person was saving 33.8%. And now we're down to 4.4%. The last time we were down to this level was um, September of 2008. 
I don't know if you remember thousand of 2008, but I was coming out of about a depression because the stock market was just getting shillelagh and there was no seeming hope to the end of it. And in fact, the hope was coming, I think from one of our economists, Brian Westbury said that our government had uh, caused the problem with the housing crisis by having mark to market accounting be the thing. So a long story short, that if, uh, if I sold you my Yeti for 50 cents, it would say that every Yeti in anybody's inventory, any place is now worth 50 cents. And so you imagine all those stores that sell Yeti, if they had to mark that on their balance sheet, they'd see a significant loss. And that's really what the government was doing with mortgages back then and forcing banks out of business and forcing um, just almost a, a continued sell off. And so that's when we hit the low of savings rate last time, and I'm not saying we're at the low of the marketplace right now, we, uh, we probably, if I pull up the screen, bottomed around September, rallied into the end of the year. They had one more sell-off until about March 9th of 2009. Was it Benjamin Franklin, a penny saved is a penny earned? Uh, we were talking with the, one of our clients earlier today who sells luxury items, like really expensive uh, fast luxury items. And he was saying that um, he's seen some signs too of 2008, just with the spending that's going on with, with uh, big time luxury items. But what I wanted to share with you guys was, was this, this, do you see this? This is the uh, American Association of Individual Investors. And this is a really cool investor survey. A lot of stock market people take it each week. And you can see here that for the week ending of 622, 59% uh, of people who took this survey believe that the stock market will be less healthy at, in six months than where it is today. The bulls were at 18.2. Now, if you look down historically, and we've showed this, this chart before, the bulls historically believe that six months out, things are going to be better. And the bears, they're, they're, they're around 30%. And so we have quite a variance here. And I thought what we'd do just right here, live on the show, I thought what we'd do is just go ahead and take this survey. And so uh, let's see here. We're going to ask Eric. Okay, Eric, I'm, in the next six months, six months from now, it's Christmas Eve, okay? You're, you're having a great time with your family. Is the market going to be up six months from now? Is it going to be neutral? Is it going to be bearish? And by the way, these are no recommendations. We're just taking the survey. But Eric, what do you say? Are we? Are you bullish? Are you kind of, you don't have an opinion, which I hope you have an opinion. Or are you bearish? Where are you at? You know, the optimism in me wishes that we will be uh, bullish. But unfortunately, I am... A little bearish right now and that's just uh my opinion so i think we will be uh down that's my that's my vote okay well i'm trumping you i'm saying i'm saying <laughs> we are bullish and and i i'm i'm bullish because hey during inflationary times what do stocks do what what do companies do i'm submitting this by the way um what what do they do they raise prices on you I kind of went to go get some coffee at the coffee shop this morning and um, just this paper cup, the coffee shop, they're paying more for these paper cups. Guess who they're charging? They're charging me. They're paying more for the commodities. They're charging me and I'm happy to pay it right now. And so we keep paying these things and companies earnings could be affected by that. Their costs are going up. Yes, but they're, also raising the prices. And so with inflation, stocks have great potential to outpace inflation. So I'm going to say bullish. And plus, I think there may even be some political things that might change come November that might affect the stock market a little bit. They tend to do that. So uh, I want to say of bullish that for the next too. six months. Size What's that? Cup, prices raised and the, the size of that cup sure has shrunk. Is that not inflation Amanda, by definition? <laughs> Amanda, I drink the Americanos. So this is a uh, refined palate here. That's fair. Okay. okay. So that's we go fun. for just a single shot, the rest water. But the best thing I think you guys can be doing right now 
is protecting your mindset. The psychology of investing or the psychology of finances is probably a course that every <laughs> high school should offer or every college should offer. Um, but if you're old like me and you're not going back to school, there's a great course that you can take in this stuff. And one of the best money books available happens to have 31 chapters. And there's a chapter each day that's earmarked for you. So uh, the 24th, today's the 24th. If you want to dive into this old historical book, the Bible, and you want to read uh, Proverbs, uh, that has it's just got a lot of great stuff on wisdom and money. I happen to pull down a couple of my favorite uh, protecting your psychology and your and your mindset quotes. Uh, this one is from um, uh, Warren Buffett. All right, the best investment you can make is an investment in yourself. The more you learn, the more you'll earn. That's from Warren Buffett. Uh, William O'Neill. William O'Neill is a guy that we really look at. We really admire William O'Neill, and William O'Neill has several great quotes out there. I was going to put up a picture, but I don't know. Uh, he says, the stock market is not random because strong investor emotions can create trends. And so I believe those strong investor emotions are happening out there. Why? Because, because they have to. The innovator has to be excited about what they're doing in the marketplace. And so maybe it's biotech, maybe it's transportation. We don't know, but we'll see it. We'll see it reflected in the stock price and even more importantly, in the volume, in the amount of voters who are buying the stock. So, so just protecting your mindset and your emotions can really go a long way uh, for helping you be a great investor. Hey, Doug, can you go back to that last screen? I want to comment on something or ask a question about that. But I still I promised you guys several weeks ago that I would remind you on a weekly basis about inflation. Doug showed you that squatty little coffee cup. I think you could call it that. I, I don't even know. They look more like an ashtray. It's so squatty. But um, the idea of uh, uh, inflation being a real thing is out there. It's thanks to your state, local, and federal governments, as well as the Federal Reserve. Uh, I, uh, I was surfing for something today. Um, and this was sad and disappointing news to me. Uh, it says, with deepest sadness, we regret to inform you that Hadley Pottery of Louisville, Kentucky, will be closing its doors sometime near the end of 2022 due to the high cost of materials, machine repairs and replacement, as well as other day-to-day -day costs that has become impossible for us to continue for the long run. Uh, we, we are big fans of Hadley Pottery. Um, pottery, unfortunately, is one of those technologies that hasn't uh, kept up with the desires of culture. And so the demand uh, isn't enough for Hadley to absorb those inflationary costs. And so these sorts of ebbs and flows in the economy, um, unfortunately take out businesses, even ones that we love like Had Hadley Pottery. The, uh, the gimbal banks, uh, these, have, these are now extinct because you can't get these anymore. Uh, this, I don't know if it'll be a collector's item or not, but we're grateful for Hadley Pottery making those uh, banks for us and for uh, your children or grandchildren. Um, go back to that screen, Doug. Yeah. Uh, help me, if you can help me understand something on that. Uh, there to the right, it says greedy and fearful. Do you know what that gauge says? If not, can you tell us next week? Because I'm wondering if that's saying now's the time to be greedy versus yeah. fearful. So, so that that's a a bull bear spread and, and you're exactly right it this is a gauge saying hey uh, most folks out there are bearish and i think another warren buffett i think this was his quote is uh be fearful when others are greedy and greedy when others are fearful so that's exactly right this is just showing you that um it, when the bears are coming out strong that you know being a little greedy that's a good place to be. And this is based on options and investors' opinions. This is not this is not a recommendation to, to put all your chips in. This no. is just say this is just saying, hey, there's a, this is kind of like a contrarian approach. I just wanted to clarify that to our our viewers who are watching that and saw that and trying to understand what that gauge was. Uh, just to to reiterate what Doug was saying uh, about inflation and. Um, the impact on consumers and how companies do. 
Uh, I noticed this morning that a uh, publicly traded national shipping company uh, that uh, is uh, uh, pointing to the future on their logo, um, it uh, announced earnings and they exceeded expectations and the market came in to buy uh, that stock this morning and it's up, I can't tell if, it looks like it's up eight or 9% today. And, and consequently, that points out, you know, if you're going to think who would be hit really badly by inflation, right. you think somebody with a bunch of trucks that are sucking gasoline at these record high prices would be going up or down. And it's kind of counterintuitive that, that it's going up because of those co costs and, and they were able to pass that on. I'm sure that customers aren't any, you know, very happy about those being passed on, but that's the way the market works. And so it's, it's a really an interesting time out there. Yeah, I think we're in a time of rotation where we've seen some companies like the oil and gas and natural gas, all of those have been leading out pretty well. Uh, anything energy related has been leading out very well. If you would have told me, uh, pick a, a sector or two back in January, which one's going to lead out, I would never have picked those. But we just get in line with the market and the market will tell us on price and on volume what's working for us. I know we repeat this all the time. But that's what we're about is just watching the market and saying, hey, what's what's working out there and can we get on board with that? Eric, what, you got like a minute, minute and a half. Tell us what you're thinking about to innovation there. Yeah. Uh, earlier this week, I was listening to a podcast and it was just going over uh, the innovation of the past 100 years. And if we think, go back to like the early 1900s, like combustion engines for vehicles were not a thing. And uh when it was developed, there was a bunch of old people saying, hey, I'm not gonna get into that. Like, that thing might explode. Um, and it just, a uh, hundred years later, you know, we we're trying to plan to ship people off to Mars in a rocket ship and set, have them come back. And it just, uh, it's inspiring to see the innovation that a hundred years has produced. And I'm excited to see what another 25 years will look like or tomorrow and just uh, find these new companies and this inspiration. Yeah, I think you're right. I think like 50, a little over 50 years ago, we launched a rocket to the moon and, and you know, depending on who you listen to, I think it's Joe Rogan doesn't think it happened, but, but we launched the rocket to the moon and, and with less power than is on wherever my cell phone, uh, like an IBM 360 or 20 of them, but less power than it's on here. They landed on the moon and then dumped them back in the Atlantic Ocean, right? Like, remember, I don't know if you've ever seen those videos of those things hitting the water. <laughs> I don't even know what that would do. I'm sure concussions were involved when they hit the hit the water like that. But but Elon Musk is not only sending them up, he's landing them on a platform and reusing the ships over and over again, which if you would have told somebody that even 50 years ago, they wouldn't have believed it. So, yeah, the optimism of the future is driven by innovation. Do we have you, Doug? Or to you watch. Can you hear me? I think you're frozen. Uh, oh, yes. I'm going to wrap us okay. up. <laughs> Doug, you'll have to save that for next week. We are thankful for you guys. We have yeah. all kinds of great ideas for you. We, we look forward to an exciting future, not only with uh, Gimbal Financial, but with but, you and helping your families live their biggest and greatest lives. And we trust that you'll have a great weekend this one. And, and call us should you have any questions. See you all soon. Thanks, everybody. See you later.